Hey everybody, welcome. Today I have Josh Summer here joining me for a quick little chat. And you get to meet Josh, who's been involved with the NativeScript community for many years. He's a NativeScript developer expert, and he comes from Ohio, United States. Josh, welcome. Hey, thanks, Alex. Is there anything else you want to mention about yourself before we get into some questions about what you've been doing with NativeScript and uh, who you are and all that? No, that's, that's a good intro. I just, I just, thank you. All right, sweet. So, Josh, tell us about your dev background. What were you doing before NativeScript came about? Prior to NativeScript, I was doing a lot of oh, ASP.web forms, did some phone gap applications, um, did some Windows Mobile 6.5 applications. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Haven't heard that mentioned in a long time. Yeah, it was, it was like a barcode scanner for a factory floor thing, and that was painful, yeah. <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. But it, that was, it was a cool project. That was a long time ago. Yeah, so just a wide variety of projects uh, at the time. Very .NET focused though, right? Yeah, there was mainly a lot of .NET. There was some occasionally some PHP projects and stuff like that. In Northeast Ohio, .NET is pretty popular. Nice, nice. Uh, and uh, at what point did you decide to try out NativeScript? Was this related to work or is this something you wanted to try out on your own? Uh, so I kind of fell into NativeScript uh, from CodeMash, which is a conference that happens at Kalahari in, up on in St. Esky, Ohio. I went there and before that I had been doing a lot of AngularJS and uh, messing with, around with Ionic because I had a background with Cordova and PhoneGap. And right. so what, I was at that conference and I just recently started a new job where we were doing a lot of AngularJS and starting to work with Angular 2 you know, since it was in beta at that time. And I kind of heard of NativeScript before, but I think I tried it out and I was having problems getting it started. And especially with Angular, because that was kind of really interesting, the Angular or Angular 2 at the time. Mm -hmm. That was what interested me. And I, that was kind of it. I just kind of heard of it, glanced at it, and it hadn't really done anything else. Went to the conference. They had a, uh, their talk, and they basically had the one ring to rule them all. I don't know if any, anybody remembers that throwback, but it was there to actually click that I could interact with native APIs. That was a, kind of like a huge moment for me because part of my pain, pain problems with PhoneGap had always been, all right, well, I can do this. And now I need to do this. And now I have to write like some objective C code or Java code and get into these things and know how to like, not only write those code, but write those code in a way that I can interact with them and then with JavaScript. And it just went from like full speed ahead to like full stop yeah. or it was just, it was just painful <laughs> the best way. Or actually I, I'm probably like one of like three people that wrote like a Blackberry app using Cordova. <laughs> So it was a, it was, I forgot it. The, the one app I wrote was for mobile, iPhone, Android, and Blackberry. That was a long time ago. Yeah. It seems like ages ago, right? Yeah. But those were always like stopping pain points. Yeah. Now I, I'm proud of met one of three people who knows how to do Blackberry development. No, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> don't, don't talk about how to do that. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so you are, you're of the, Angular variety of native script, right? Have you ever tried Vue or Core, or you stick to Angular? Yeah, so I've used I used uh, Core for a good bit for some things, kind of messing around with it. Like I tried to write a long time ago. I had like some plugins out there, and they, they still are. I don't know if they work 100% as much, but I was trying to write the Core plugins, and I even had an app on the App Store that was written in Core huh. with a lot of callbacks and stuff like that. Is it still on the App Store? No, I, well, actually it's still on the Android App Store. Uh, iOS 13, when that came out, it broke it. Mm -hmm. And I just have, at that point I hadn't touched it in like two years. And I was like, I gotta pull this, I can't, it doesn't work anymore. I have to sell it. It, it was using the camera of the phone to detect motion. Okay. And we're tracking like micro drones, like for going through a phase where I was really into flying like micro drones. And so I made an application using native script that every time you fly over your phone, you'd set it down like your starting gate, you fly over your phone and track that. And then you do a lap around the office in your little drone and then it would track, you fly over it again and it would track the time and figure out your difference. And then fly over again and track your time and the difference. The, app, the website's still up. Uh, we'll fly, um, Wait a minute, Are you, do you do FPV? Yeah, that was, it was via FPV. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna chat about that. I wanna ask you some stuff. That's very cool. It's been a while. I haven't done, I haven't done it for like two years now. But. Yeah, I've been watching some YouTube videos about that. So <laughs> you created your native script app and you published it. Have you used any tools for that besides uh, a code editor? Do you use any other tools, any favorite plugins that you used or use now? So man, that was a, that was a while ago thinking about. It. 
I used like some of the Visual Studio Code plugins. Because Visual Studio Code is kind of my editor of choice for like the last five years or so. Yeah. I had created a plugin that was on the Visual Studio uh, apps, was a plugin store or whatever. And it was like, it would create template uh, Angular components. And it was just oh. a fork of, of a web-based one that I had created. And I think someone else forked it and fixed some problems and they started cropping up there. And then also used, I think, a plugin from Nate, uh, Nathan uh, Walker with the, uh, like for like, you know, the IntelliSense in your templates and whatnot. That's gotta be a must these days because I can never remember like the inputs like value or input. Is it value, is it input, is it item? I can never remember, it's always something. Yeah. It's, yeah. Always, it's always not what I think it is. Yeah, well, I, I kind of, uh, I guess I'm more of a purist where I try to use as little plugins as possible, but I have tried that one before. And for those folks that are starting out, this is really cool actually because Right now, I only use the John Papa's um, Angular snippets, but Nathan Walker's yeah. Native Script snippets uh, plugin is really cool for that as well. It's it'll give you template auto completion, right? Yeah, no, it's that's probably definitely like for me, that's a must-have. Bouncing around between different languages and stuff like that, I tend to always get these things mixed up. I think the other day I was working with a, a, one of the, my friends at work, and we were doing something. I couldn't remember if the stack layout was orientation or no, I can't remember what we thought it was other than orientation. <laughs> we couldn't remember the property for, you know, determining which way the, you know, data, yeah. the elements. It's orientation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was not the one I guessed. So, <laughs> something else and I can't remember now. That's cool. What about plugins uh, besides tooling? Just uh, plugins that you might have used in the past that are memorable that you want to let people know about that are useful to you? There is a native script menu plugin that I really like, and it works. I'll have to find it. Let me, I'll and send it to you. But it, it's just a really great little plugin, and it kind of follows like some of the native inputs. So basically, I'm sure you've seen it like in the Android, you have the three vertical dots. Yeah. Or alternatively, like, I think the thing that would be most analogous to it in iOS is like the three horizontal dots. Mm -hmm. And in Android, when you click on it, those three dots, it a little like drop down or fly out menu will come out and you can select a couple different options yep. in there or whatnot. And we kind of already have that native script with the action bar, but there's places like you kind of want that elsewhere or you maybe need a custom implementation right. of it. Yeah. Or alternatively on iOS, like a lot of times those three little dots will, there'll be like a very similar action, but it won't be in the action bar. It'll be located somewhere else in the UI. And so those three little dots, when you click on them, though, you open up a menu, uh, I forget what it's called in iOS, but it comes from the bottom up, like not a bottom sheet menu, but it kind of has sheet? like the, yeah, it's like an action sheet. Those two patterns are very analogous, but they're very different. And this gentleman, I think it's like native script menu or something like that. I'll, like I said, I'll send it to you. Yeah, let, let, uh, send it over and I'll maybe link it down below in the, in the description of the video here. No, that sounds good. That, that, that one's perfect. Like it, it just works really well. I think. I think it needs updated for native script seven at this moment, but as a whole, like getting those interactions in there, which I think are like, is really the power of native script key. And this meant then that menu button was just wonderful little abstraction and way of doing those things without custom work. Very nice. That, I don't hear too much about that one. I know which one you're talking about and it's not a very commonly used one, but it's a very handy one. That's for sure. Yeah. I try and keep the plugins pretty light just cause I don't like adding dependencies. Yeah. And... Same here. Same here. Absolutely. And then less stuff yeah. to upgrade later, right? Exactly. And that's kind of always been a pain point, which I think it was a really good lesson for me, like as a, like, just like doing a lot of JavaScript development because NPM is a wonderful tool and you can find a tool in there to do just about anything, but you kind of need to be judicious about it. It can be sometimes that thing that holds you up later on down the road. Yeah. Like I'm sure we all have those like NGX2 plugins or was it NG2 was like the pattern for a while. Oh. And then still floating around there and it's like, oh boy. Hopefully this keeps going or gets updated or something. Yeah, and then you have to upgrade or make a little change on a Friday afternoon. And then you realize yeah. that the change you made comes along with a whole slew of updates you got to do with your NPM packages. And then you have to track that down. And on Saturday morning, you're walking out of the office wondering what the heck happened to the last 24 hours. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or like the iOS 14 update that it hit us like, <laughs> like last month. And it was like, hey, we're releasing iOS 14 tomorrow right <laughs> yeah well luckily that's been handled already in native script land so that's good yeah what hardware do you use to develop on do you use a mac windows linux uh i'm, I'm a mac person 10 me 10 years ago would have never said that but these days i, I like i like apple and i like their devices and i use a mac yeah. uh, 2019 macbook pro that's what i have right now yeah 
uh, the 19, yeah. I think. Oh, uh, well, 15, 15.9 inch. 15 inch? It's, it's not the 16 inch one. Okay. I'm like kicking. Yeah, I have the 2019 really also. And I've been using uh, Windows. I was a diehard Windows and PC fan for a very long time because I was doing Microsoft and .NET development. And then when I yeah. tried using a virtual machine on a Mac, it ran better than a Windows laptop. And I said, okay, this is my thing from now on. And it happened to be that I was doing mobile. I was starting mobile development then too. So it just coincided because you know, if you want to build for iOS, you have to do it on a Mac. Yeah, that's kind of how it happened to me. Like work got us a Macs because we were needing to do some more mobile development. And then we were running, I think, Windows and was it Parallels or VM? VMware Fusion. Yeah, VMware Fusion. And it kind of, and those actually didn't work too bad. And next thing I know, I'm doing like .NET development on a, win, on a Mac and it wasn't too bad really. Yeah, yeah, it worked out pretty well. It, it, it could have been, it could have been smoother at times, but like then uh, somehow, after that, being like, oh, I don't like Apple devices. And now I'm like, I love Apple devices. Yeah. <laughs> We're converted. Yeah. What do you use to learn new technologies? Let's say you wanted to check out the new library that's hot out there. And on your weekend, maybe you have some free time between, you know, punching the, what are those called? The boxing thing? Oh, I don't know. Was that, yeah, I, we have a like a heavyweight bag. Heavyweight heavy bag, bag, yeah. What do you use to learn new tech? Do you go to blogs? Do you watch videos, conferences? Uh, all of the well, not conferences these days. Not or, not these days, right? Yeah, you know, mainly actually it's been like blogs or videos or you know, I've had subscriptions with Treehouse.com, Egghead, Oral Site. I bought a course from like Native Scripting, I think. Dot com. Yes. Oh, shout out to you. Yeah, <laughs> I was trying to learn things. Uh, yeah, actually, it was an OAuth one. That was one of the ones. Oh, this, the security course? Yeah. Oh, very cool. What did you think of that? It was good. That was, it, OAuth is really confusing. <laughs> so you know, it, it helped, it helped str uh, streamline those things and be able to rock and understand what was going on with it. And so, yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I put you under pressure on purpose. We, you yeah, know, you're being okay. recorded, so you can't say anything bad about my course. No, dude, it was good. I, I'm trying to remember back because I was like... It was like a well, like a year and a half ago or two years. Yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. I like, think it came out like like um, at the end of 2018. Yeah, we 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 like you and I you and I collaborated a little bit on the OAuth plugin or your your OAuth plugin because that was we ended up using that with Identity Server three four I can't remember. Oh, very cool. You're yeah. using the custom provider with that plugin. Yeah, so there were some things. OAuth is just not easy. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely some confusion. On the web, it's okay, but in mobile devices, it's really confusing. Yeah. Thanks for your no, contributions no. to the uh, OAuth 2 plugin, by the way. Very cool. Uh, I think it was relatively minor. So, <laughs> no, well, thank you nonetheless. No, no, but it, it, honestly, we couldn't have gotten that work done without it. So, that was huge. And oh, I'm glad it helped. That's awesome. That's good to hear. So getting back to FPV, I'm sure you have time off. You you seem like you have a lot of hobbies. You talked about boxing. You have guitars hanging on your wall. And then now you mentioned FPV. I want to hear about this FPV stuff. Are you, you actually flying the drones or what? Oh, uh, yeah, man. Well, that was like, I haven't really done it for two years now. Um, so I got into that like not long after Native Script or like a year after Native Script. Like, so like four years ago or something like that. And then it got into like the tiny whoops. I don't know if you've ever seen those or like the micro drones that float in your, they're about the size of your hand. And then uh, they have like a little FPV camera on them. Huh. And they use, at that time they used the brushed motors. So like the motors would like burn up eventually. Like they're, but they were cheap. It was like 20 bucks for like four motors for a drone and you can fly it around and have a little board. Huh. And it like, it started off with like, all right, well I'll buy like the cheap $20 drone and then I'll put a camera on it. And you like learned how to solder a camera onto the board. So draw power for the power supply and you get to fly it around for like two minutes and then you're like well the the transmitter that comes with this cheap drone is like worse than my xbox controller so i need a better transmitter and then you go buy like you know the hundred some dollar transmitter right. and they're, well, you're, well, now i need a new board and next you know you have a new board and it becomes a hobby about buying things yeah a lot. <laughs> it's a spiral <laughs> yeah that's what I but, hear. I hear about that. And that's why I'm afraid to even start because I know that I'll just get into it and then I'll be just spending all my time flying these things. It was an obsession to say the least for a while. Like my wife had rent, eventually was like, okay, I'm tired of hearing about drones. Yeah. And we need to buy a house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It eventually it waned, but like, I still like watching the videos and stuff like that. And like the tiny whoops are so cool because they're kind of disposable. It's that's not, not really disposable, but 
because I flew a couple into like the dog water bowl. Uh -huh. And it was, well, at least it wasn't like a thousand dollars. Yeah. I just saw a video the other day about uh, a guy flying a, a drone this huge. Each blade was 13 inches and he's flying a red camera on there, FPV style. So this thing can go like zero to 60 in less than a second. Oh yeah. Yeah, so this is like a, a huge drone for professional videography and it's it's just amazing. I, I got into like the drones, like the racing drones. So like the biggest one I had had three inch blades. I forget what size lipos it used, but the first time I flew it, I like put it out in the, the field and put my goggles on and then I hit that throttle to fly upward and it just shot up like a bullet. And I remember just shaking because it was like, it was like a roller coaster. Yeah. And then <laughs> flying it around just going zoom, you feel it right it's so cool um the app i wrote did not work with it because it moved so fast uh. <laughs> and but but and also i wouldn't want to fly that drone going like 70 miles per hour over my phone especially because i'm not a good pilot um but no that was dude that was those was, they're a lot of fun even now i like i think it was today's prime day so like i, I saw like the dji mavic mini was on sale and i was like man if i had the money for that I could pull out the goggles from the basement and just fly it around the field behind the house. The, Mag Mi the Ma Mavic Mini, that's uh, that's not a FPV one, right? Well, no, I think you can fly it FPV. Like they have their, their transmitter has like a camera. Oh. But I think it plugs your phone. Or like I still have my old goggles, which are like Fat Sharks, and you can plug an HDMI cable in them. Like I used to, like another thing you can do with those is like I used to plug them into my laptop and then use it as like a second monitor and then you fly like a flight simulator from there. So oh, I see. And I plug it in. So it's almost like you're really flying a real drone, just not burning up batteries or crashing it and going, oh, I got to rebuild this. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I don't know that much about them, but that sounds a lot of fun. And I watch the videos. The videos look a lot of fun. So maybe one day you and I will get together and. You can show me how to actually do it. Auto. I, I need to go through my stuff and see like what I have still works. <laughs> <laughs> like I probably need to buy new batteries all over again one of these days. Yeah. All right. Well, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing what your story is and your experience with NativeScript, your development story, your life, and what you're up to. And thank you very much. And if people want to reach you, how can they find you? Um, I'm on Twitter. My handle I think is underscore uh, Josh summer okay i'll link to it down below thank you so much josh and have a good day and everybody thanks for coming and watching the video see you all in the next one